<clears throat> right. Hello, everyone. It is Monday, 30th of January. And I might be starting the extension to the challenge, or I might be just doing a little offshoot where we're doing something different in between. Because at my charity gala finale event bash thing that I had on the 21st, 21st of January, was that only last week? That was only last week. It seems like ages ago. Um, my uh, good chum, Andrew A.P. Butler, who provided me with a lot of samples towards the challenge, came up to me with a big package. Steady. I mean a big package, as in it was some bottles wrapped up. And he said, the last donation that I gave you has come with a catch. I was like, oh, okay, right. It was like, in return for the money that I donated, I'd like you to try these ones, ideally on video, and let me know what you think of them, because I think even though you're trying to be as neutral as possible, you're still somewhat influenced by some of the notes and the things that you're reading about before you do the videos, which is probably fair play. Um, yeah, I probably am slightly influenced, because I think it, you can't not be. You could try and be as objective as possible, but if you're reading up on information, you're gonna get little snippets and reviews and things where they go, oh, this is absolutely crap and all that lot, and it's just gonna seep in there. So, this package that he gave me, I've transferred it into a little Tupperware pot because I was afraid the whole thing was gonna smash. I've already smashed a Claxton's glass already tonight, so I don't really wanna drop any of the others. So I've transferred it into a Tupperware pot, and here they are. So there is, and I'm gonna angle it, and this is where they all fall out and I drop them. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. 12 of his little weird sample bottles that he's got. But here's the catch. This is what they look like. Okay, I, I actually don't know how he's done this, but they've got little tabs on. I'm hoping you can see, I don't wanna, don't wanna spoil this one. There's a little tab on it and you can peel it off. These are blind. I don't know what's in these. Thanks, Andrew, thanks a lot. So his request to me is that I try these absolutely blind, totally blind, no idea what's in them. He couldn't remember what was in them because he hadn't written them down. There are apparently some in here that distillery-wise and brand-wise, I've not yet covered in the challenge. And if you're probably already aware by now, my plan is to get to 500 completely different brand stroke distilleries by this time next year. 27th of January is a Saturday. It's the Saturday after Burns night. That is my aim, is preferably, ideally, because the first one was such a blast and raised loads of money is to have another event at the, on the 27th of January, and by that point, preferably do three to get me from 497 to 500. 498, 499, 500, finish on 500, and finish on 500. I don't think I'm gonna carry on after that. So scotch, done a lot of scotch, so it's probably gonna be world whiskies, American whiskies, things like that, but there are gonna be some scotch brands in there, and I do actually have some bits and pieces already that are left over from my original 366 where I could have used them but had other ones to put in, so I've got a, a bit of a backup already. I can probably get myself to another 10. So it's 134 more whiskey reviews that I need to do over the course of a year to get myself to 500, it works out about, well, on average, two and a half drams a week. So if I can do two or three whiskey reviews during the course of a week, maybe just do three on one night, just pick Friday, Saturday night, film two or three, and then just stagger the videos through the rest of the week. It means that you wonderful people watching get a semi-regular review. It's not gonna be every day because I'll be honest, it was getting in the way of my life. But if I can do one on a night and do some quick editing and then stagger the videos, you've got something every other day that you could watch. Why you wanted to watch that with me rabbiting on, I don't know, but it's, it's something to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through these 12 and as I come across the ones that I've not yet covered off in the challenge, I will then do a quick pre, not preamble, I will go away, get the notes on it, do the history, and then put the history either before or after, not quite sure how I'm gonna work it out, so that you've got that video where it's part tasting and part history, facts, anecdotes about the distillery brand that I've done. But I'm not gonna know until I've done them. So I've gotta kind of do it ass backwards, where I've gotta do the taste of it first for, for Andrew, so that I am actually trying them blind, as he asked me to do, and then if I've not covered them off in the challenge, then do the other bit, where I talk about what it is, where it's come from, who started it, all this lot. So we'll see. So, I haven't even numbered this up. I don't even know where to start. I don't know if it's cash strength. 
the first one I get might be the equivalent of Octomore, ridiculously PT, affect the next one. Who knows? So, no, 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 no. That one. Okay. So, I've got some water just in case. I've got my jigger. I've got two glasses because I'm going to do two. And let's see how we go. Now, I make no profession to be anywhere near an expert of whiskey. So, I am trying these. Bl oh, blimey, the colour on this, Jesus. I'm, you know, I'm trying these absolutely blind, and I have said a number of times I'd love to try these things in a blind tasting because it would completely throw you. I am going to look, these 12 whiskies, I'm going to look like an absolute freaking idiot. I guarantee it, because I am going to try and guess where it's from. I'm not going to bloody try like the distillery or the age or anything. Well, I might give it a go, but this is going to make me look like an idiot to hopefully prove to you watching out there that it is nigh and impossible to figure out where things are from. I've just done a little video on the Claxton's Ardmore. Ardmore matured in a Laphroaig cask. Tastes like Laphroaig. You're never gonna pick its Ardmore. Anyway, so, the color on this, bloody hell, that is dark. So either a lot of coloring's been added to it, or it's a pretty heavily sherried cask. I can't even see through the label. Oh, Andrew, you've done it properly. I'm like, no, oh, no, 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 no. As tempted as I am, I'd be very tempted. I did even think about pulling them off, seeing what they were, and then kind of sellotaping them back and not actually showing you that I've resealed it, but it's not fair. It's not what Andrew wanted, and he did donate quite a bit of money, and he put money towards buying stuff on the auction, so I can't really cheat. It's not really fair. Oh, I will say that I am slightly suffering from a cold, so I might struggle a bit. Is that a good enough excuse? No, I didn't think so. Right, okay, so. It, there is a spirity edge to it as well. That's it. It's cleared my nose out, that's for certain. There is sweetness. Has colour been added? Possibly. It does give me a little bit of that plasticky edge that makes me feel like colouring's potentially been added. It's quite spirity as well. There is definite, uh, it's making my nose tickle. It's making me think that it's probably like a 46, 48%. I mean, that's the thing. I don't know if it's cash strength or what. I don't know whether to add water to it or whatever. Oh, and he did say that the price range of these ones was anywhere between, what did he say? 30 quid and 1,200 quid. So you can guarantee the one I think is absolutely bloody awful and I wouldn't touch with a barge pole is the 1200 quid one, but we shall see. Hmm. So the, considering the dark, the, the dark color, not as sweet and rich as I thought it might be, I think there is sherry element to it and it's more of a sherry element than a bourbon element, but it's, it's a little, it's tight on the nose still. And there is just that slight edge as though colouring's been added. So, comes in on your tongue, sits there, quite a thick mouthfeel, pretty neutral. But as you swallow, there's this burst of fire. And I think it's the alcohol percentage was a bit higher than I thought it was going to be. Definite, I'm gonna say sherry cask. It's definite that sherry grapiness rather than the darker bourbon character, which guarantees it's bourbon cask. But I'm gonna go with sherry. Nearest hint of smoke, but I'm gonna go away from Isla. Is it scotch? Yeah, I'm gonna say scotch. I'm gonna go with <laughs> I don't want to say anything because I'm going to look like an idiot. I don't know if it's Speyside or Highland. It doesn't seem quite deep enough for Speyside. It's really, really hard to kind of sweeping generalizations to go, oh, it tastes like a Speyside. But I'm going to go with Scotch. It's got a scotchiness about it. I'm going to go with Sherry Matured. I'm going to say it's about 46%. Is it single malt? I think it might be. I think it 
think it might be. It doesn't quite have the bite of a grain. It's very, very sweet on the finish though. Really almost cloying. The sherry element is really almost chewy. It's a very, very, not quite burnt caramel, but it's a real fudgy character. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm not gonna finish, I'm gonna finish as I'm looking at it. And what, sh what else shall I do? I should probably look at my iPod just to kind of get some rough details of it as well, in case I already have covered it off. <laughs> oh, Andrew, I hate you, mate, I hate you. It is Blair Athol Bicentennial 18 year old. So, scotch, tick, single malt, I think tick. Speyside, can't remember. <laughs> Let's see. That's really heavily sherried, really heavily sherried. Right, Blair, Athol, by, no, not bilingual, by, by centenary, by centennial. 18 year old, sherry cask, get in there. Oh, Highland, yeah, it's Highland. So, this is being sold for 225 pound at the Whiskey Exchange. And it's, well, I wouldn't have said it was that high. 56.7%, presumably cash strength, but I wouldn't have said it was that high. No, I wouldn't have put it that high. 46 is probably actually a bit under. I maybe should have. 40, I've, no, I've not yet come across like a 48% or anything like that. Oh, it's the dog. I just heard this noise. I wonder what on earth is going on. Um, I thought it was aliens landing and it's just my dog making some weird noise. It's the sherriness on it. The, the intensity of that sherry is just so full on that it, it covers half of the alcohol percentage. It really does. That is a sherry nuclear bomb, not just a sherry bomb. That is so full on sherry. I'll be honest, it's a bit too much sherry. It's got the rich intensity of, it reminds me a little bit of that really, really full on sherry sweetness of the Starwood and the Bren, the, the French um, whiskey, the French single malt, where this, this really intense fruitiness there wasn't overpowering. This is just a little bit a little bit have some sherry in your face but if you like sherry whiskies i highly recommend it well that was the first one of the 12 and i'll be honest i'm a bit chuffed <laughs> that i got that much right um because i didn't think i was going to get anywhere near so yes interesting very very interesting indeed um right i'm going to stop i'm not going to do them all in the same video so i'm going to do a different one um, and we'll call this the blind test challenge or something, whatever. We'll figure something out. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.